What is going on my friends? Hank here and in this video we're going to check out the Steel Hangranata 24 commonly known as the Potato Masher. This is a safe dummy replica from at the front and it's a great option for reenactors or for display in your home office or a scale modeling bench. Today we're going to go through the features of this replica and learn a little bit about the history of one of the most iconic and recognizable weapons of the 20th century. So, before we walk through the details of the Steel Han Granata, it's important to understand how these grenades worked and how they compare and differ from some of their contemporaries. Instead of explaining how this grenade works, I'll share a quick video of the Steel Han Granata in action. Warning, this is a very intense video of a German soldier in the heat of battle, so be prepared. Let's roll the clip. Alright, so... Maybe not a very intense video, but honestly, can we agree how ridiculous that was? Let's break this down a little bit. A. Who is this guy? Why is he messing around with a hand grenade in a full suit in the middle of a field? B. Why is who I assume is his wife just standing there, and why does she seem to suddenly realize her husband is about to detonate a hand grenade and then just run away? And C. This has to be the most casual toss of a live grenade in history. He just flicks the thing like 10 feet away. Anyway, if you get nothing else out of this video, I hope you enjoyed that. Silliness aside, the Steelhound Granata concept has been around since World War I. The German army introduced their first stick grenade, the Mark 15, in 1915, and it was widely used throughout the First World War. After the German Empire's defeat in 1918, pretty much all armament R&D came to a halt with the Treaty of Versailles, but grenades were still one of the first things that did see some development in the interwar years. In 1924, the Weimar Republic updated the Steelhound Granata with the M24 model, which is what you see here. Not a lot changed between this and the First World War variant other than the handle getting a little longer, and this design would be used by German forces in pretty much every theater of operations where they fought during World War II. This replica is pretty much a perfect recreation of the real deal on the outside, so let's walk through it. The basic construction is this long wooden handle, which is generally very comfortable to hold. These were designed to be easy to carry in a bag or in your boot or most commonly just in your belt. And in reference imagery of German troops from World War II, you're almost always going to see at least one infantryman with a stick grenade stuck in his belt, like so. As you saw in the video earlier, this weapon could be thrown overhand like a tomahawk. The British War Office did some testing of a captured earlier model of stick grenade during the First World War, and they found that this could be thrown pretty much the same distance as their smaller, round Mills bomb, which was about 30 yards or so when you were standing up. One of the key differences, though, and an advantage of the Steel Hong Granata, is that rounder grenades, like the Mills Bomb or the American M2 grenade, or Mark II grenade, would bounce and roll upon landing. So sometimes, even with the perfect throw, your grenade might not stay exactly where you want it. The stick grenade, however, would land and just kind of pivot. So a well-placed infantryman could drop this a little more accurately. And the only issue with this replica here, the handle of this replica, is the finish. This is a nice, smooth finish, whereas the actual grenades would just be a basic, unfinished wood. If your weapon is going to explode after one use, after all, you don't really need to waste time on a nice finish. Moving up to the head of the weapon here, this is where the explosive, charge, and the fuse would live. Now, a couple of interesting points about the explosive mechanism in the Steel Han Granada. First, the Steel Han Granada is a concussion grenade, unlike most of the standard issue grenades carried by Allied troops during World War II. The Mark II grenade, for instance, is a fragmentation grenade, which means it explodes and throws a little bit of shrapnel in all directions. The main purpose of that grenade is to clear infantry out of a wide, open area. The Steel Han Granada doesn't have a shrapnel element, it just explodes. There'd be about 6 ounces of TNT filler in the head of this grenade, which was really effective at clearing small spaces like trenches, buildings, bunkers, alleyways, you name it. Infantrymen could throw these ahead of a charge or ahead of clearing a building, and the explosive shock and noise would stun the enemy long enough for the troops themselves to rush in and finish the job. So an interesting difference there, the Steel Han Granada is not a frag grenade. The more you know. The other interesting point here is the detonator trigger mechanism that this weapon uses. Contemporary grenades of the Steel Han Granada, like the American Mark II, used a spring and firing cap method of igniting the weapon's fuse. A pin would be pulled, which would release a spring-loaded striker that would fly down and strike a percussion cap. This in turn would ignite a fuse, which would eventually time down and ignite the rest of the explosive filler. The Steel Han Granata, on the other hand, uses a friction fuse. So to use this weapon, you first need to remove this safety cap on the bottom of the handle. This just screws off, like so, and reveals a hollow chamber within the handle here. And in that chamber, we have a little rope with this ceramic ball on the end. And what you would do is pull this string down, and that's going to drag a rough steel rod through the ignition fuse. This causes sparks, kind of think like a, like a match, and those sparks are what ignites the fuse. There's roughly a four and a half second fuse on this weapon, and then the main TNT charge will go off. 
So kind of an interesting piece of technology there, a little different from what you'd usually see in World War II. The top of the steel hunger nata unscrews so you can access the fuse and explosive charge. Obviously this replica is just hollow other than the replica fuse here. And German troops were instructed not to insert the fuses into these grenades until they were ready to go into combat for safety reasons. The text on the head here is a little reminder specifically for that purpose. It says, Vor gesprausch Sprengkapsel einsetzen, which translates to before use insert detonator. If you speak German and I completely butchered that, please let me know in the comments below. So that's a little history about the Steelhangranata 24. Also worth noting, the name Potato Masher that Allied troops christen this little weapon with is pretty simple. Kind of looks a bit like a kitchen potato masher. Proof that a nickname doesn't need to be clever to stick. If you'd like to learn more about some other iconic World War II equipment, you can check out this video right here. And if you'd like to check out this replica for yourself, I will leave a link in the description below. Until next time, my friends, thanks for watching. Be well. Happy building scale modelers. Cheers.